It's time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode of the Up North Journal podcast is brought to you by PSE Archery. Carbon Express. Fourth Arrow Camera Arms. Wind Scent Hunting Sense. Killer Food Plots. Seeds, Supplements, and Attractants. Cabela's. Spot Shooters. Limb Walker Game Calls. Twisted Minds Bowstrings. Hunter's Blend Coffee. Antler Action. And Family Traditions Tree Stand. And don't forget, you can catch us in syndication at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on GoodTalkRadio.com. Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Up North Journal, everybody. I host Mike Adams sitting in the cabin tonight, and look who's back. I'm back in the cabin. Back in the saddle again. How's it yeah. feel? Yeah. Oh, it's good to be in the seat. <laughs> and not good to be back home, huh? Right? That's what the up north will do to you. I tell you what, being above the bridge for a week was just uh, was awesome. We talked last Sunday night, and then, uh, to tell you the truth, uh, when we were talking last Sunday night, we had the, the bad weather coming through, as you heard on the show, the rain and the lightning and thunder. And then after that, it was good the rest of the week, and then... Uh, it was uh, cooled down a little bit. Uh, the humidity came way down, mm-hmm. which was really nice. So it made every day tolerable and uh, getting out on the water and the sun. And it was uh, a good week. Uh, had some visitors uh, we talked about. Uh, got some pictures of them. Yeah, we're going to share yeah. a little here in a few minutes. So, uh, But overall, um, seeing all the seeing the trail cam pics that I was able to get uh, for the week, uh I liked it. Encouraging. Like to see the fawns. Okay. Um, saw some other fawns out there, but uh, you see any bucks in velvet? Oh yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. We seen some spikes. Uh, looked to be the beginning of about a six point right now. Okay. Uh, he was he was uh, standing right by the bridge when we came in the one one evening I think. And uh, but yeah, definitely saw bucks in velvet, which was nice. Um, little spikes, mostly uh, uh, like a four pointer, uh, maybe a six pointer type thing. Okay. Uh, but they still got what two months of growing season, so right on. Okay, he can he can, he can grow up a little bit big, bigger and uh, body wise, year and a half, two and a half. You probably being that deer, it'll probably be a two and a half. Okay, uh, he fits the mold. All right, to be a two and a half up there. Uh, body wise, uh, the deer all looked uh, fairly healthy. Mm-hmm. The summer looks skinny thing going on, uh, but uh, no, it was uh, it was good. Uh, the water getting out on the water was nice. Uh, just floating around, a little windy, but to deal with it. Fourth uh, of July had uh, just uh, it was a good relaxing time. So most of your time spent was like we talked last time is getting up there, surveying the situation, trying to figure out where you're at with uh, logging, how that's regenerated. We talked about that last week and showed yep. that uh, food plots, kind of getting a. Did you draw any soil for soil? You know what? I, I I did not draw any soil samples. I might uh, at Labor Day. If I go back when I go back up there, because uh, I'm gonna grab the wheat that mm-hmm. uh, was commented that I should use, mm-hmm. I'm gonna mow it and throw it. Mow and throw, as what it was said. Okay. So that's what I'm gonna do for this year. Uh, which, like I said, dude, I was quite ecstatic to see something growing. Right. Right. So anything after that's a bonus. Right. No, that's good. And that one field, uh, we saw a deer in it uh, pretty much every evening. Okay. So encouraging. That's good. Now. Kind of after that, from what I gather, uh, I think you probably did a little more fishing than anything else. It was fish, sit by the fire, repeat. Okay, fish, sit by the fire, and repeat. Oh, throw in a drive there. We went for a drive every evening on the on the, the ranger. and Uh-huh. Yep. So, so sit by the fire. Sit by the fire. Um, and there wasn't really many fireworks up there to begin with anyways. Well, that looks like a pretty good firework right there. Well, that was the best firework. <laughs> The Michigan State bird, the mosquito, was not... Actually, he was probably the worst the last Thursday evening and Friday morning. Okay. See, he was starting to get bad. A little agitated? Yeah. He, so I'm thinking it probably fits about a week out from rain and stuff, so... Okay. So it was uh, it was fish, Sitting there, that, that was... Uh, that's repeat. in the evening. Uh, okay. In the morning, we'd sit and have coffee and stare at the woods and watch things come alive. Okay. Um, what I, I, I want to know, I, we just, we just threw a picture up here on the live stream. What happened? Okay. So, <laughs> so the dock is, is, is a little low. Yeah. I guess I wasn't supposed to be swimming. Would you consider that swimming? No, I see your uh, fishing rod in your hand. So, so you asked me last week of how the reservoir was and I hadn't been over there yet. Mm-hmm. So I finally, we headed over there on uh, Monday and, 
we were on the back side first, and the water seemed okay. Okay. You know, I was like, okay, let's run. But now when we came over to the boat launch, now that typically is above water. Yo, I would hope so. But it seems to be that it's uh, about six inches underwater at the end. And there'll be times in the fall, mm -hmm. if we go over there, that you'll see that's two, three, four feet above Below. water. You're right. Right? So right now the reservoir is, is high. Um, my They'll drain it by September. But you think this is from that big flood that they had? I think, it, I think it's a combat. And plus, uh, last weekend uh, when we were on the show, they were mm -hmm. having more rains and stuff in the area. So it probably has everything to do with that. But okay. uh, boats were able to launch and everything, so people are heading out fishing and boating. So that, but, That's a mighty fine hat you got on there. That's my sun hat. Yeah. That's my mossy oak <laughs> sun hat. I tell you what, buddy. <laughs> I am not burning these ears off. Yeah, yeah. No, he, he, he looked like he was ready to go to a party. I tell you what, I was uh, covered in a big hat and yeah. lots of suntan. Did you catch any fish? Uh, I caught a couple small ones. Deb actually caught the biggest one. She caught about a 15-inch pike. Okay. Um, so uh, Kelly caught a couple. I caught a couple. Didn't catch what we caught last year, though. Not sure why. Do you think that's because of the rain, the water, the Ye high water? No, it's because I think the lady at the store that told Deb... Uh, it's a bad week of fishing because of the calendar said so. Was right. Okay. She had one of those fishing calendars or something. Okay, so it said that this it said week... fishing wasn't going to be good till like tomorrow, next Monday. And okay, maybe she's right. So it's like a farmer's almanac. You got the fish almanac. I think it was or something like that. So uh, lo and behold, we did some fishing. There was actually some other boats out there, and they weren't catching anything either. So okay, but uh, it was a good time. It All right, just and then if you go to the 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 eagle pick there. Okay. Uh, while we were while I was fishing there. Okay. This was taken from while you're fishing. Yes. Okay. Deb had the regular uh, the the Canon camera, and two eagles decided to fly the length of the the reservoir, and they started from our right and moved to our left. And uh, yeah, it we we actually seen a juvenile earlier in the week, but then these yeah. two came over. I remember and, you talking about that. And I tell you what, that is just a magnificent bird to see. Yeah, those things are huge. Yeah, you know, in, in the photos, you, it's kind of hard to get perspective of just how big they are. But oh, it is, and, and yeah. he was quite a distance out, or right. she. And uh, basically, they were just doing circles, the length up and down, and they just kept going. I think so, they were fishing? I'm pretty sure they were fishing. Okay, didn't know. See, I'm trying to remember the time of year for the mating ritual. I think it's it's right around the middle of June to July ish. Oh, okay, I think. So yeah, no, it was. Uh, they were they were fishing the way they were they were separated, and they were just kind of. Doing their little slow little all the way down. Okay, so it wasn't like doing what the, they'll do a power climb? Right, no. Nope. And the one would be way up there, the one will power climb up, and then mm -hmm. all of a sudden they'll lock up and tumble through the air? Right, no, it was, uh, they were they were scanning the, the waters. Okay, cool. Yeah, it was. So yeah. it was yeah. always good to see them. Makes a highlight. But you, they they must not have read the calendar either. Yeah. <laughs> because they, they didn't catch anything, I assume? I, di I didn't see them catch anything, so maybe they didn't. Okay, just wondering, just wondering. All right. Well, so all in all, good week. Absolutely. All all in all, good week. Good week. Uh, get up there, re-energize, come back to the race. Okay. You ready to go back to the race? No. Speaking of race, I know we talk about the outdoors. Right. But did you happen to hear about the race last night? I watched it last night. Our, our local kid, Eric Jones here from Byron, Michigan. I mean, literally a stone's throw the next town over. Absolutely. He won his he first won, race. Won the Firecracker 400, whatever sponsor it is now, but uh, down in Daytona. So It uh, used to be the Firecracker. Yeah. That was for many years. Uh, it's still the Firecracker to it, me. It is. <laughs> and uh, I tell you what, um, it was good. It was actually an exciting race, not to get go off into the, the race subject, but uh, somebody got what he deserved. Yeah, that's what I kind of heard. Yeah, I kind of heard. I, I heard bits and pieces of it throughout the night. But uh, I just want to give a quick shout out to you know the kid. He's just a young kid, man. He's twenty one, twenty two, mm -hmm. and uh, he he's kind of come up fast through the circuit. And actually, I got to w do some work last year for one of his sponsors. I followed him around for a day uh, for Re Reese's Spine Foods or Gourmet Foods or whatever it was. It's okay, Reese's Supermarket. Yeah, you know, they do the packaged food. He got to follow him around for a day. They hit, back in his hometown, he had a picnic, come home, and uh, they put on a picnic for the whole town. So I got to chase him around shoot video. Cool. So, cool, cool, cool. But uh, big shout-out to him. Nice. Very nice watching a uh, young man chase his dreams and become successful. Yeah, he did. So. He won it. It was pretty good. Hey, a quick shout-out to uh, Chris Schnur and Lincoln Roan who were on. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, before we go to break here, Lincoln said that uh, for all of our Michigan listeners – 
make sure this week, I believe it's the 12th. Which is Thursday. Thursday, uh, NRC meeting. Get out to the NRC meeting. Uh, Michigan NRC is going to be making their policy rules for the upcoming deer season uh, in a couple weeks. So this, I believe, is probably the last opportunity for the public to speak directly yep, to them because they make it in august so and i and this one is in lansing yep thursday in lansing yep that's what he just said so um make sure if you've got the opportunity to get over there make your voices be heard um get in front of that panel right. sign up and get, yep. get your name in absolutely and i think you have to pre-register for that check online if if uh if you can and and check that out uh, any of the Michigan deer hunting forums, uh, if you're not part of the Michigan deer hunters, let them go, let them grow. Get over there, get to be a part of that. A lot of good information over there as well. Um, and they can hook you up to where you can sign up to get out there and, and speak and let the NRC know how you feel about these yep. proposed changes that are coming. Yep, and then after that, we'll see what, what happens. Let the chips fall where they may. And uh, if if they fall where they want them, what, what they've said they're going to do, uh, we will manage our own property and deer accordingly exactly so that's one thing they can't do is, is stop you from doing that so exactly but uh, uh billy hoffman landed last night i he, don't want to hear about it he just came back from hawaii so I, then he I'm went jealous. and sat in the shot in the state championships with a six hour jet lag and needless to say he's not a champ <laughs> you think it's funny how that works right and daniel <laughs> preston hey what's happening that must be why i i, I didn't shoot so well in the backyard today is uh, uh jet lag no not jet lag just work lag work lag of the week yeah yeah last night it we, happens i got uh got home at 2 30 in the morning so it was uh, that when you got home last night yeah it was a 14 hour work day that started at one o'clock in the afternoon so yeah makes long, day. long day mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but um i tell you what why don't we uh go ahead and take our first break and come when we come back you got a few more pictures here. You'd yeah, like just to got show. a few more to wrap up the week. Uh, some interesting things that are off the camera. So, all right, we're going to step outside, folks, real quick, and uh, take a break. We'll be right back after this. PSE Archery has reinvented the way you buy bows. From now on, you can make the most educated decision possible by basing your bow choice specifically on your shooting needs and goals. All you need to do is ask yourself, what kind of shooter am I? What do I want to achieve? PSE will help find the right category for you. So, what kind of shooter are you? Find out at PSEArchery.com. Killer Food Plots have been helping property owners for over 20 years create premier whitetail habitat. Whether replenishing your soil with their all-natural organic fusion pellets or planting a premier KFP food plot seed blend to help your deer rebuild their bodies through spring and summer while supplying the much-needed high energy during and after the rut, you can trust that Killer Food Plots family and their products will help your deer achieve their full potential. Welcome back to the second segment of the show, everybody. For those of you on the live stream, appreciate everybody tuning in Absolutely. tonight. Absolutely. Um, you looked... Uh, I totally just... Whew, I went lag there. Um, <laughs> yeah, tuning in the live stream, joining us on the live stream. If you're listening to us on the on the podcast, uh, hope you're enjoying it. Uh, and if you missed this episode, uh, tonight on, on, uh, on Facebook... Well, we post it uh, on Wednesday this week. On YouTube. It'll be back to normal on YouTube on Wednesday. Right on. So absolutely, get out there. Uh, Billy Hoffman's asking, Dan, have you guys looked into any cellular cams for up north? Yeah, well, it'd be nice if you could get signal. <laughs> signal is the issue. Mm-hmm. Signal strength is the issue. Right. There, um, we've talked about it a little bit here on the show. Working with some guys, we're trying to put together a little something-something. And let me just say that they're they're working on things that will work kind of like Wi-Fi. Right. You know. Um, and we talked about that, and we've talked about it often. Yeah. It's it just... Just like Wi-Fi, you got to be so close to the hotspot, right? Yep, they're still they're still working and develop and trying to develop this technology, um, and that's about all I can say about it right now. Yeah, but exactly. they're so actively working on it. Uh, if you look at it, if you look at our property and uh, as far as signal strength go, you go from no signal to uh, decent signal, which would be up in the hardwoods. Now, what that can do for a camera, I'm not sure. The only problem I would have probably is it might grow legs. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Like I got four cameras out right now that I was like, really, you're up there. You're worried about somebody taking them. I had a two man cheese stand walk off. Really? Yep. Wow. So it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, but then again, what, here in Michigan, we call them absentee landowners. We, you don't live on the property. Yep. You know, and, and being that we live downstate, um, you know, for me, it's two and a half hour drive to camp. For you, it's even further. Eight hours. So, you know, I try to get to camp at least once a month in the downtimes. And actually, I haven't been to camp since mm, middle of May, late May, I believe. So it's been a month and a half, almost two months since I've been to camp. Um, yeah, things, you know, things can happen if yeah, you're not there. I, I, I one year went up there. I bought a brand new two-man stand. Mm-hmm. Uh, me and Kelly were going to hunt out of it. We put it up. We hunted out of it. Uh, I went. I unbuckled it just to relax it for the year and came following year came back and gone went looking for it and I looked at Callie and she looked at me and I said this was the tree right because mm-hmm. I remember that stump and right oh yeah I was gone I'm like oh yeah, that's sad that's sad you're right Billy bears eat cameras up there too first camera I ever had was an old mole tree and actually it's here in the cabin somewhere over there <laughs> okay I'll dig it out one day um I think it's over there. If it's not over there, it's out in the garage. But this thing was like literally, you know, this big. You know, it, this would have been in two. The, the M60. It's about this. Yeah. It takes D's. Yep. Yep. M60. It, it would have been like 1999, 2000, 2001, somewhere right in there. First bear hunt I did. Bought that camera, put the camera out, strapped it to a tree, went back to get pictures. A week or two later, camera's gone. <laughs> I'm like, okay. And it, we we're hunting off of a creek. I mean, the creek wasn't no, any wider than this table right here, you know, and, you know, about that deep. But needless to say, we we're hunting right there by some water, and uh, I looked down, and it's laying right at the edge of the creek. Wasn't in the water, but it was okay. right at it, you know. And I'm like, okay, so why is it not on the tree? Well, I pulled the pictures and see a bear, see a bear closer, see a face, see a nose, and then see the ground. <laughs> <laughs> you so. know what? That That is so true. They, uh, they're they very inquisitive. Like, yeah. I, like uh, and, and matter of fact, I do have one of those Moultrie cameras. Okay. And I have to have to admit, it's one of my best working ones. Yeah. Even though it takes Ds. Right. But it's still one of the best working ones that I have. It took great pictures. Yeah, absolutely. You know? But when it comes up against the bear, it kind of loses. Well, that's when I took and built uh, a bear-proof housing for There you go. I got an ammo can. So, and, and used a, uh, a metal cutter and cut the face of oh, the yeah. camera out, okay. you know, so it could actually, you know, it would wouldn't fall out, but you could actually get pictures through it, you know. Right. And, uh, and then I took and cut a slot in it and used a, a ratchet strap that was about that big, about this wide, uh, you know, two and a half, three inch wide strap that they mm-hmm. used to, yeah. to ratchet lumber on a semi with. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I put it on a tree with. It lasted. There you go. <laughs> so, Lincoln says Covert has a camera with signal boosters they're using in Nuevo this year. Okay. So, they're, they're, I'm sure with technologies getting out yeah. there, it's getting better. I've heard a lot of good things about Covert. We're, we're not affiliated with anybody for nope. trail cameras. Um, nope. And just like Billy said, uh, Spy Point's got one. Yep. Covert's got one. I've looked at Spy Point cameras. I think Spartan has them. Spartan, Spartan. yeah. I've looked at Spartan. I like Spartan's uh, yep. technology as well. Covert's got some good cameras. Um, but, you know, the bang for the buck, I mean, when you're talking about just a point-and-shoot camera, I, I really like the Brownings. Yeah, you like the Brownings. Yeah, I've had and, really uh, good luck with them, you know. And I, I still want to try the Cabela cameras. Uh, I know you use those. Um, it's just when I've got... You know, one hundred fifty, two hundred dollars to spend, which isn't very often. You know, and that's comparable the the Cabela's to the Browning. And I'm, yep. I'm just like, I know Danny likes these, but I know the Brownings work exactly. And it, it's it's always that 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 tug of war of which one do I want to buy? Yep. You know, you just you just got to go out and. But you you started with the Cabela's. I got and you the, like them. I got three Cabela's. I got two black flash, and one white flash. You know, the thing I like a, about that. With the Cabela's is the fact if something goes wrong, you lifetime, take it back. Lifetime warranty. You better believe it. That's so, what I'm waiting for. If I need to, I'm going to take it back and get the lifetime warranty. And that's one of the things that's one of the selling points. Right. So um, I had my first Browning go down. It's been it's been in the field four years. Okay. Four, yeah, four seasons. I've had it out, and and I generally put mine out in March or April, first of May, and I let them run until December. I really should let them run all year, but I just I just don't. I'm, something i need to try to do and leave a couple out just see how they last through the winter but um i leave them out quite a bit and like i said you know we had the first one go down and then that same year we bought three for camp and one of those went down so out of that first okay. first batch we've had two of them go and they went at the same time you there know you go so but yeah so uh speaking of bears mm-hmm. um 
Yeah, speaking I, of beers. I, I, I decided to pull, so I put up some cameras, and I was pulling them every two days. Mm-hmm. Uh, and lo and behold, um, the one of my fields, um, this little guy came in. And this looks like the guy that visited camp. He looked it looked about the same size. Uh, just a little feller. Yeah. He, he came into camp. I could tell the, the paws are his dead giveaway. They're, right. Uh, the one I... The one I was feet away from looking out the window at the cabin. Yeah. It had the same kind of paws. Okay. I was like, okay, that's probably him because he was on he was actually on the north side of the, the property when he came into this camera area and uh, I like this picture right here. The one looking at the camera, <laughs> you want to take a picture of me? Yeah. Uh the one that I didn't that didn't send you that uh besides that, right? See that tree in the background yeah. a little bit to the left? Yeah. Well, there's a picture of him laying right there. Okay. So he came and ate and went and laid down. Laid down okay. So, now, is this a clearing that we've seen before? This is this is off to the side of that clearing. Okay. The clear if I would be standing in the clearing. Okay. And I face the camera. I put the camera to the sun back of the sun, so I don't get the sun in the camera. Gotcha. Yeah. So, and there's this perfect stump that um, I put on some minerals, and then I added a, a mineral block. Uh, as I left this year. Okay. So something ate the stump and was eating it, and it's probably raccoon. Okay. Got a picture of him, too. But but then, uh, yeah. So then um, that's that was across the north side of the property. And then mere 50 yards from the, ca- the camp mm-hmm. was this guy. Okay. He's a much bigger bear. Yeah. And uh, this is 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, so I figured we were probably standing at camp talking. And he was maybe 50 yards away down the trail eating some corn. Okay, so now this is on a trail camera. Yep. I forgot because I zoomed into these pictures a little bit, and I thought that this had the trail camera tag, yeah. tags on the bottom. Yeah, and this is 10 o'clock in the morning, and he came in and was just uh, surveying the situation, and, you know, he didn't go far. He just decided, you know what, I'm just going to sit down and eat. Mm-hmm. And uh, But, yeah, that's a pretty decent-sized bear. I liked uh, if I had a... I don't know how tough it would be to get him, but... Uh, well, right there looks like a pretty good shot. <laughs> well, yeah, that'd be a good shot. So with uh, the... So is that one. <laughs> yeah, If exactly. you're where the camera's at. So, and there again, you know, that 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 right there is where I did put some... Uh, I put some seed down there, mm-hmm. and uh, some of it came up. I don't know exactly all of it came up. It was my smorgasbord field where I just had leftover of just about all the seed that I had. And, okay. Uh, other seed and i just threw it out so if it grew it grew yeah you you asked me before we went on the show you know looking at that one there um how big i thought he was you know and i was like oh you know 200 to 25 maybe um it's you know typical michigan black bear and you good indicator is the ears yeah exactly that was the first tip off I, yeah and his ears I stick think, up quite a bit so he, he i don't think he's that he's not a big bear i think that's the the best picture i got i think of him facing mm-hmm. where he kind of showed you that his ears right are, are on the small side to his head right and that's a pretty good indication that's like okay yeah. he's a decent bear that i would not want to run into yeah and i know he was not the one in camp yeah so yeah. i so this is about the average size you see up at your place Generally, or do you have? I mean, do you got any? You know, four or five hundred pound the, bears. The two big bears pounds? that I see, mm-hmm. uh, this one and the one in twenty fourteen, are about this size. Okay. And the other two that I've seen, the the little bear mm-hmm. and uh, the cub that I jumped, mm-hmm. uh, were on the smaller side. But th- these are the two big bears that this is probably the, the biggest bear I've seen on the property. Okay. Yeah, we uh, uh, we typically see a lot of the, of this size at our place. You know, of that size, but we've we've seen them much, much bigger too. Right, and, and I imagine if I set up a a bear a bear site, mm-hmm. we probably could get some more. I, I would definitely move it from where it's at. Mm-hmm. Um, right now, he's kind of that's out in the open. Yeah, I, there's a, definitely some better spots I'd I'd pick. And matter of fact, uh, we had uh, lasagna one night, <laughs> and we had leftovers, so uh, there is now some lasagna in that area. Okay, so we'll see if he likes lasagna. I I would say he probably would. I, <laughs> there, there's something that I just bet he would. Right. So, uh, but yeah, no. But it was good to see the bears um, on trail camera. Mm-hmm. Not excited to see them in camp, but it is what it is. Okay. When you're out in nature, that's the things you're going to happen. Uh, I saw the two bears on camera. I got pics of deer, some fawns. Yeah. See, that's something you didn't you didn't send me any pictures of uh, of the. Uh, Deer. Yeah, deer. no. It, it, it's just You're hiding a, them? <laughs> Everybody knows what a, a fawn looks like. 
Not too many people get up and close with a person with a bear. Well, you, you should have you should have uh, you sent some sent some fawn pictures. And, you know, the, like, and like the one too. the one picture I do have the, of the bear is uh, the little guy. You could see the his ear mm -hmm. in the first picture, and I almost thought that would have been the time we lost the camera, but he didn't pay attention to it. I guess. Oh, okay. I did see. Yeah, there was one picture yeah. I, I didn't transfer over. Right, and that was his ear. <laughs> that was an ear. Okay. I was like, uh oh, and then the next picture he was on the on the corn, but. Uh, uh, good stuff. You know, it was it was just. It, I tell you what, it's just a week up there when you see bald eagles, bears, deer. Mm -hmm. uh, listening to grouse drum. Mm -hmm. Did you get a chance to talk to your uh, DNR biologist? Nope, didn't see Did, him. Didn't didn't see him in town, and uh, I didn't go to town much. It was kind of nice. It was uh, just hit and miss. Actually, went up to the little store, got some ice cream. Did but, you bring uh, some back for the bear? Uh, no, I made sure I eat it before I got it back to the bear. <laughs> Uh, well, I tell you what, we're going to step outside here and take our second break. We're bumping up on it here. So uh, we'll, we'll step outside. We'll be right back after this. PSC Archery has always dominated the speed category. Now, the most revolutionary cam system ever to hit the market has perfected the shooting experience. Introducing PSE's Evolve Cam System, featuring extremely high let off capabilities and the smoothest draw cycle in history. No other cam system has ever delivered this level of total comfort and total control. Experience PSE. Experience performance. Killer Food Plots have been helping property owners for over 20 years create premier whitetail habitat. Whether replenishing your soil with their all-natural organic fusion pellets or planting a premier KFP food plot seed blend to help your deer rebuild their bodies through spring and summer while supplying the much-needed high energy during and after the rut, you can trust that Killer Food Plots family and their products will help your deer achieve their full potential. Welcome back to the segment of the show. And a uh, comment from Fred Trusky. Bears are a pain in Manistee County. You know, they get a little pesky at our place, too. They, You know what? They, yep. Speaking of bears, let's stay on tangent here on bears for just a second. Okay. Did you get a survey from the Michigan DNR on bears this last week? Or a week no, before, I didn't see one in the I, mail. I got one. Um, and it was just—it was a general survey. It was talking about bear seasons, bear hunting, bears in general, and habitat. And it was quite lengthy. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I got sent one, so I took some time and and put it together. And uh, I guess the one complaint that that I have is I wish they would split the red oak bear management unit up into two sections. It's Cause pretty big, isn't it? The, the... It's huge in the, in the area we're in, what they call club land. Okay. You know, it's bigger tracts of land, and you don't have as many people, if you think about it, probably hunting it as you would, you know, smaller parcels where there's, you know, families hunting those smaller parcels. Okay. More hunters per square mile, I guess. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I'm guessing. Um, you know, and I, I don't know this, I don't have any facts to back me up on it, but that's just what I, I perceive. Okay. Um, we're covered up in bear. You know, we, that whole area has got a good number of bear, and sometimes just things get a little hairy. Well, you got some, I, I know you got a big garbage bin out there, and I'm sure. Yeah. That's, that's like here bear, here bear. Well, there's there's a gentleman that's part of our co-op um, that lives, well, as a crow flies, it's probably a mile and a half, two miles at the most, but it takes 10 miles to get there. <laughs> you got to go up and around and back around. But he has to take his front end loader, and put the bucket down on the dumpster every night or the bear gets in it and throws everything out. <laughs> so, yeah, they've learned. Yeah, well, that's it's that's the thing. You know, they they'll know where to go. Yeah. And they'll keep coming back. But that that that's the one thing I guess that that I complained uh made made known is, you know, it it takes us about 10 years now to draw a tag. It, it's but, a highly see, coveted it, area. You know, it's 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 kind of ironic that it takes you that long. Mhm. Mm to get a bear tag, but yeah, you got that many bear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah, and part of it was, you know, do we want to see bear um, habitat uh, improved in in the southern part of the state so bears will start to migrate south? I I don't care one way or the other. I know people down here don't want to see them. Probably I'm gonna say why? Yeah, I don't know. See, that's that's I didn't. They they had a whole section of questions on that, and you know I was what? wondering uh, what their, their was it this game week, went. past week, or was it earlier? When the thing come out? Yeah. It uh, came in the mail? No, it was an email. Oh, no, I didn't, I didn't get one. Let me see if I can find because it. Because 
Why would you? Why would you pose a question? I don't know. Why would you want to bring? I, I would a thought it was interesting that they into brought that up. a more populated area. I don't know. It's You're good, asking for trouble. It's a good question. Uh, that kind of worries me. Hey, look at Tom. Tom Gensel's been uh, been listening to Tim Seas, and uh, he, he's a, he's a hoot, and he's ready for a snipe hunt. Tim Seas, I got I got to take her for a snipe hunt for you. See, and he's ready. <laughs> Just come on down. But that, anyways, I, that that's an interesting. Why would you know? I'm trying to find it here. You know, it it just goes to. It was on Monday. They, okay. They sent this out Monday. Yeah. It says. Uh, let me see. Let me just read you know, that's kind of intro to I it. I don't know. Why would Why would you even ask the question? I don't know. Because when when we get a bear to come down south, anyways, it's all over the news. Right. Share your opinions on future bear management. Michigan's home to an estimated twelve thousand adult black bear. To guide bear management throughout the state, the DNR, with assistance from tribes and many other interested, uh, are interested in maintaining a healthy black bear population. Developed the state's first bear. They developed the state's first bear management plan in 2009. And I thought that seems a little late. It took. It wasn't until well, 2009 that they developed a management plan. I, I was surprised at that. That seems awful late. That's what they said. Well. It depends, I guess, what you consider plan. And and now the DNR is, is working to revise a plan and is encouraging the public for help. A questionnaire, and I got the link to it here, uh, has been developed to capture opinions, which will be accepted until July 31st, 2018. The plan we have been operating under for almost 10 years has been a great tool. Uh, and the DNR specialist, Kevin Swanson, we want to make sure that the plan is still meeting the state and other needs or determine if changes are needed to ensure thriving bear population for future generations. So what they're saying is basically, do you, they're asking what do you their think? opinion, what do you yeah. think? If we, if we, Do you want to see them more in the South? Hope, they're probably looking for an answer. Yeah. Well, they said the current plan's objectives include the one that they're going under now, maintaining a sustainable bear population, providing hunting opportunities, and minimizing bear-related conflicts. Right. So, so you know. But, yeah, that's that's their question there. I'll send it to you. But, yep, you got to keep those bears in check, that's for so, sure. Or just like you said, you, know, you get a big dumpster like that. That's just, yeah. that's just like a buffet. Right, right. So would I, would I mind seeing a bear down this way? Yeah, I don't know. I guess I'd feel different if, if they were so, here. I don't know. Well. I'm used to seeing them up north. So. Look what we have now. We got coyotes in the area. Yeah. And we hear stories about little dogs getting Dogs taken and cats getting or, taken. Mm-hmm. Or somebody seeing a coyote in the wrong spot. Mm-hmm. You know, that it, one thing I didn't hear this week was coyotes or wolves. You didn't hear any of the place. Didn't hear any. And I was out there. I was out tracks? there too late. Um, or scat? No, I didn't see anything, actually. There was a couple tracks that might have been coyote. But uh, no, didn't hear anything. It was, uh, and, and think about that. If it, you know, what if the wolf population came down here? Yeah, I think a lot more of them get shot. Oh yeah, you, you know it. So, but uh, no, it was quiet on that front. Which uh, seeing the fawns, but seeing the bears, I don't know if there was enough food and the fawns got through the predators. Mm-hmm. So that was all right. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Fred, Fred says. Uh, protecting too many bears in the Baldwin unit. Yeah, and I feel the same thing over over in uh, in Red Oak as well. Just at least from my perspective at our place. Right. That's really the only perspective I have. And it, it takes eleven. Was it thirteen points to get yours or ten? Ten. Yeah, I, I'll have. I've got eleven now. I just chose. Well, you and I we talked yeah. about doing a bear hunt this year, but it just it didn't pan out right. timing wise. Right. So and it, it, if you if the you cost and everything going by points and everything. Um, and Ron Moses says Yotes and Fenton. Yep. 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 I hear them. I had them run through the backyard. It's, mm-hmm. it's just uh, there's uh, every once in a while I'll catch one mm-hmm. darting through the woods, and you can tell. Yep. Uh, but uh, well, I was out in the back field here last last week sometime earlier in the week. I was out doing some shooting, duffed an arrow, and okay. went through my backstop. So when it goes through the backstop, I got to go into the field. And yeah. Look behind, and there was a big a big coyote scat. Pile, okay, and, and it had fur in it, so it wasn't a dog. Right, it was coyote. It was a coyote. You know, there's no tracks because there was grass and stuff. Couldn't see a track, but I've seen enough coyote scat to know it's coyote. And I'm like, haven't heard any here in a while, in a long while. But it's like, okay, so he's prowling, he's prowling around, you know. And mm-hmm. I don't know if it's a if it's a mom out searching for fawns because that's great fawning cover behind my house. Oh, right absolutely, now. Uh, that whole area back there. So, oh my gosh, yeah. I don't know if she was out. You know, prowling for if it was a it was a female, you know, for pups, you know, to drag back to the den. You know, we've heard stories about that and seen trail cam photos. 
you know, everybody's got them. Uh, right. If that happens, so. Yeah, no, it, it's, uh, I'm glad to see the funds that I did. So that means they got past the initial bear thing. Right. Okay. And, uh, um, do you typically see like late drop fawns at your place? Yeah, sometimes we do. Yeah, it, it's it's every once in a while we catch a really small one. Do you ever see fawns like at the very beginning of bow season with spots? Still with spots? Not typically. Okay. Not up so there. You don't get like that third third rut. No, so. I don't think we do. I, I really, I, I think they're picked off by then. Um, okay. I think they. Uh, I've never. I don't think think I've seen anything with spots in October. Okay. I got a truck cam photo of them at our place. And we talked about mm-hmm. that on Friday night with Tim and the, the third rut and how that works. And and uh, But up at, up at our place, it, it's survival of the fittiest, obviously. And I don't know if everybody gets bred. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Which would surprise me if they didn't with an, the amount of spikes that I had last year. Okay. But then again, I don't know what the predation takes. So. How much predation takes place? Right. Okay. So. Well, I'll tell you what. You want... You, uh, we want to save everything here for the last segment. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Anything else on the trip that was uh, earth shattering, exciting? No, not not really. Just we, relaxed. Oh, yeah, definitely relaxed. You ready to go back to work? Absolutely. Batteries not. recharged? No, you're not ready to go back to work. No. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, Ron Moses was late coming to the show because he was chowing down on prime rib. Oh well, man, if I'd known that, we'd have come over to your house. I was going to say we could have done the show from your dining room table. <laughs> right on. So, all right, I tell you what, uh, we're going to step outside. We're going to take our last break. We're going to come back. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some deer management that we talked about with a friend on Friday night. And yeah. We'll expand on that maybe just a little bit. So, we're going to step outside. We'll be right back after this. Acceleration is part of PSE's DNA. PSE pioneered the speed movement. Now they've developed the Vapor category to help you find the most powerful bows on the market to fit you. High speed equates to intense power and building the momentum you need to be successful. Are you a Vapor shooter? Find out at pscarchery.com. Killer Food Plots have been helping property owners for over 20 years create premier whitetail habitat. Whether replenishing your soil with their all-natural organics fusion pellets or planting a premier KFP food plot seed blend to help your deer rebuild their bodies through spring and summer while supplying the much-needed high energy during and after the rut, you can trust that Killer Food Plots family and their products will help your deer achieve their full potential. Welcome back. Last segment of the Last show. Last segment of the show. Uh, good to have you back in the seat. I'm glad to be back in the seat. Although I was ready to bring somebody else in for you last week. I know you were, but... Uh, I had Tim C. sitting on the sidelines waiting. That, that's what I heard. He was uh, ready on pins and needles. To, he was waiting for the go. He was He was, He was. was there warming up, man, throwing passes. He's put me in, coach. I'm ready. <laughs> but then we made connection. Yes. So, But, you know, it's it one of those things. Is I wish I could get better, better signal from the cabin. Mm-hmm. That would be... Awesome. It's going to be see. interesting this year. Um, I'm going to have a couple times I'm going to be up north um, for extended period, and I'm just I'm wondering if we're going to be able to pull off doing basically a reverse show. You'll be here, but I can take gear up with me, and we can do it via Skype. Right. And uh, you'll be in uh, in the Danny cabin. I'll be in the Danny cabin, and you'll be at the deer the, cabin, the lodge. Yeah. So Lucas Brown. Hey, buddy, what's up? Hey, what's going on, Lucas? So. Uh, but yeah, no. Uh, so. I get back, uh, we uh, and get on Tim's show Friday night. Yep, and talking does. They were West Virginia. They were talking does. Okay, um, and I, I gotta imagine. You know, I, I we all hear a lot of different things from different regions across the United States and and deer management styles. Um, and I, I just saw earlier that that Wayne Sitton had tuned in. I don't know if he's still on with us on the live stream or not, but. Uh, I know they've done research, you know, a lot of research in Michigan. They've done it in Pennsylvania and Texas. And it all it's all kind of pretty much the same basic information, you know, as far as deer management and buck to doe ratios and, you know, the the ruts and the fawning and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, so it, like you said, the mm-hmm. fawning, but the fawning part of it, you got to go back to the the fall. Right. Go back to the rut, go back to your buck to doe ratios. And that's what they were talking about on uh Tim's show on the limb, which is 
Friday nights at 8, 8 o'clock, o'clock yep. 8 to 9 o'clock. He live streams over On The Limb. Go to Facebook. Yep. Check out his Facebook page, On The Limb. And uh, they were talking ab- about, you know, the rut in, oh, there in West Virginia and talking about, you know, seeing a second rut when the second rut kicks in or seeing fawns, uh, you know, fawns being bred in that second or late rut. And so, excuse me, I, I kind of threw in – my two cents worth, you know. Well, it was your two cents worth, but it was it was also who it was. We, you know, you originally as you know, we learned this stuff from yeah. the, the people. You know, I, we've learned it from Dr. James Kroll and Wayne and Luke uh, sitting here in Michigan, and we've learned it from QDMA um, and the things that we've learned and, and studied on. And getting back to the to the buck to doe ratios, if you know, if if it's a skew, you've got more does than, than you need, more you know than really the the habitat and the herd can sustain. Exactly. And then you, you, you get extended ruts. Yes, and you mention his name and he shows up, by the way. Luke Sitton showed up. Hey, Luke, what's going on? And, so, um, Luke, correct me here as we're talking as if I've got some of this wrong. Right. right. So, you know, it, it all starts with that. And one thing QDMA has mentioned was, hey, Michigan, you, not don't, shooting enough, you don't shoot enough does. Right. You're not and shooting enough does. Kip, meant, that was like one of the first things when they were looking at it, it says, wow, mm-hmm. that's odd. Mm-hmm. So... So, but getting back to, if does don't get bred, and that first that first rut, that first cycle, first estrus cycle, they go into the second one. Okay, your bucks are still chasing. Your bucks still aren't taking time to recover yet because they're still chasing. Yep, there's there's still does in, you know that need to be bred. You know that is that that second cycle. So they're not replenishing the body fat. They don't have time because they got one thing on their mind. Yep, and they're it, a dude, and it's <laughs> not know? eating. Yeah, exactly. It's not eating. So. It's- is that extends in in the case at our place we've seen even that third rut which is, is definitely not good it pushes them even further into the winter season and then with their bodies being depleted not having enough fat stores they wind up being susceptible to pneumonia and and from what we saw at the deer health check they they taught us a lot of these bucks are, are dying due to pneumonia later in the season because they just they can't get those those energy stores replenished exactly and that's the thing that yeah they do eat Mm -hmm. but they don't take the time out to to get all the nourishment they Mm -hmm. need right you know and uh so you get into that third cycle Mm -hmm. and then okay so then from that point okay so you you have does going that long Mm -hmm. wait that means you got too many does Mm -hmm. that's what we learned so now like you said now you take your box okay let's Let's separate the bucks now and say, okay, now you guys are, are weakened. You're not eating, haven't been eating as much, mm-hmm. and now we're going to throw winter at you. Right. So they've got that to deal with. Okay, so you got that working against you. Okay, let, let's go Let's go back a little bit. I'm talking about the age class of, of does. Once we get them herds, you know, they're too big, doe herds getting too big, you've got a lot of older age class does. What we've seen, I've seen for the last, the four deer health checks that I've been at, as well as other things that I've read and seen from different people in the industry, they talk about those older does typically will throw twin doe fawns, yep. which exacerbates the problem, okay? So now you've got old does breeding more does, and it just starts to compound, okay? So that's why we want to shoot off our older doe older age, does. age groups. But okay. now if you go and at the health check we saw with the younger does, mm-hmm. what did we see? That it threw a, a buck fawn. Okay, and that's what some of the guys on Tim's show was talking about. Well, we get into that second rut, we start to see fawns getting bred. The reason being, and, and this was in the QDMA deer steward class, that fawns, they need to reach about 80 pounds weight Okay. to become mature enough to breed. Okay. okay. For them, I guess it has something to do with the hormones and everything kicking in, that weight. Uh, it, it's just like us humans, they don't become... R- into their menstrual cycle until a certain age. Well, animals the same way. That's that weight class that they have to hit. Okay, so that that's why it's later in the season. They it depends on the habitat. The better the habitat, the quicker they're going to put weight on. Right. So if, if if they were if they were dropped in May, June, July, mm-hmm. August, September, October, November, it's about six months out. Mm-hmm. So that puts them about six months worth of uh, months to put on enough weight to become mm-hmm. mature enough to be bred. So if you take a late, late, later deer that got maybe July, mm-hmm. gets later. So yeah, it's kind of make it. It's kind of you're putting the puzzle together. Yep. And maybe we need a whiteboard or something. Right. But, well, let's throw throw a little bit of habitat into this now. Okay. Let, let's let's talk about the amount of deer on your property and the habitat. The more deer you have in the property, the less habitat there is, and the more they eat. Right. If you keep your doe numbers down or your deer numbers down in check in that carrying capacity, 
you've got more habitat for them to feed on if you've got the right habitat. So the does that breed and drop fawns have better food sources. Make sense? Yep. Which means they produce more milk. The more milk they produce, the heavier these younger deer get quicker. Okay? Right. Makes sense? Absolutely. So if we got these little does that grow quicker, then they can be- get into the breeding pool faster. And if they do, typically, we've seen at the deer health checks, about 80, 85% of the time, they will throw a single buck fawn. So that, in turn, flips in our favor right. of the buck to doe ratio. So it all works together. Okay, so you mentioned that, the, the bucks and the mm-hmm. does. And we're spreading out the fawning season. Mm-hmm. But if you, we get our numbers in check, we don't. Right. And Lincoln says here uh, the extremely late fawns makes more of them success, susceptible to predation. Absolutely. And, and this is the thing I was trying to, to use hamburgers as an example to teach Tim. We talked about this. And I, he said, good, put it into food terms that I can understand. And uh, what, I, what we were talking about is, okay, so if you've got first rut, second rut, third rut, those are spread out by 28 days, right? So you've got three distinct cycles. Let's just, for, for numbers' sake, so it's easier to understand, let's say we've got 100 fawns being born, okay? That's just the number it's going to be. But let, let's say a third of those does were bred in November. The other third was bred in December. And then, wow, we had a, we had so many does. A we had another of, third of them in January. Yep. So we've got 100 fawns being put on the ground. Instead of putting 100 fawns on the ground in late May. All at once. All at once, we've got, let's just say, 33, 33, and 33. Now, if I come to you, and I've got 33 hamburgers, and I say, you've got a month to eat these. And in another month, I'm going to give you 33 more. And that's one a day, right? Yeah, it's one a day. Basically, I'm just going to sit there and have one a day. Okay. Make it last to, to June. So now, I mean, not that coyotes are really working that way but i'm just talking about predation in general but if i come out and say here's 100 here's 100 hamburgers and i need you to eat them you're not going to be able to eat all 100 of them so your survival rate is going to be greater right exactly and that's the thing if if we if we were to say okay all you predators you have the month of june or may and that's it and that's it mm-hmm. but but if i take well, them and split them up and trickle them out over time they're more susceptible to being uh, for predation plus Knowing that the predators will stick around, right? So then the way they are is they're going to go where the food's at. So if you cut the food off June 1st, they're they're out of there. Okay, getting back to the milk. Wayne Sitton just chimed in. He, he's got something here. He says, milk production is based on amount of intake. Quality of milk is based on quality of habitat. Better, higher fat content of milk produces better body fat and growth on fawns. So people miss the milk versus milk quality equation. Okay, makes sense to me. The intake's one thing, but it's like, I guess, eating a bunch of candy or eating your vegetables. Right. So nope, eat, that, having the right the right habitat. That, the having, right habitat, is, according to Wayne, produces quality. And he, he, he we had a video that he showed, he did for me uh, when we were at camp last time, back in May. We showed one night here. And he talked about what's out in the forest versus what's on the food plot. And, and even and that really opened my eyes to the fact of a food plot reducing predation by keeping the does closer to the food source. When you have a food plot, there's more usable food, quality food there. Remember the hula hoop? The hula hoop. Versus being out in the forest where there's less of it. You know, And he was saying it would take, he threw that hula hoop out in the middle of the forest and he found, I think it was nine things in that hula hoop. That there was, the there deer was would nine eat. things in the hula hoop. And he threw it in a food plot, and he said everything in there is what a deer will eat, and that'll replenish. Right. Okay. So it would take 100, 100, 150 hula hoops out there to equal that one in that field. So if you think about it, deer's she's out there walking around more trying to find that same amount of food. She's away from her fawn longer, and that increases the chance of that fawn. Yeah, absolutely. And and, that uh, eat by predator. It goes to show you taking care of your habitat is important. And you mentioned that. Mm -hmm. Uh, I noticed there was a pine tree by the garage. And the needles, the all the ends of the needles were eaten away. And at your place? Yep. Okay. Which kind of shocked me because when you turn around and look and go, there's a whole bunch of food out there. Mm-hmm. But think about it: if they had that late, that late uh, weather we did have, mm-hmm. they're probably panicking a little bit and saying, "I got to eat something." Well, up there, that you get your snow stays on a lot longer. Uh, absolutely. Up, up there in, in the UP versus where we're at there in northern uh, the northern Lower Peninsula. Yep. So. Um, but they kind of shocked me seeing that. It was just like, wow. Now, before we started learning all this stuff, how soon, how, 
would you have ever paid attention to that? Nope. You know, you know, my cousin Dennis pointed. They go, he, hey, look, look at this. They're eating the ends of the pine tree, and it was right by the door. I was like, I was like, yep. So see, spreading the word, and that's what we're trying to do: spread the word. And and and, and I and I tell you what, it, it, the the does um, are are smart. Whether they're I, I, when we when we drove up to the house, uh, my cousin's house, that the camp, there was a doe laying down right next to the house. The bed, if you put her in that, she was laying up against the cement block. She's staying cool. Okay. Laying in the shade. Right. So then, that was the one day. Next day, I come back, and I come down the hill, and he's got a, uh, a shed that he stores the, the wood in. Mm-hmm. So I turned my range around, and I came up right in front of that door, and I heard a god-awful commotion. And I look over. There's a doe in the woodshed. <laughs> and there was one window out the back, uh-huh. and it went out the back. Really? All I, when I first heard the noise, I looked over and all I saw was a butt with legs and wood flying. And I'm like, oh my God, what is it? And then I caught her going, she got through the door and then she was gone. Come to find out, uh, Dennis goes, what was that? I said, that was a deer. Come to find out, she came back the next day. She was laying on the dirt inside the shed. Staying cool? Staying cool. She yep. the, the second time Dennis surprised her, she didn't go through the window. She came right out at him. Yeah. It's like, so, oh, I remember uh, that last time. I'm not going through there again. Right. <laughs> but that just goes to show you that, you know, they're resilient at what they need to do. Well, at our camp, uh, I was talking with uh, one of my buddies up there who, who lives up there. And he came in one day, one afternoon, and he looked back. He's got a trailer parked in behind a cabin. And he looked back there. There's three fawns under the trailer in the shade. In the shade. Just hanging out in the shade. And I've seen doe uh, quite a few times up at our place. Um, there's a building across the little pond, and there's a little alcove on that front porch, and it's concrete, and they'll lay in that shade on that concrete as well. Yeah, you know, they, they find places. They know where to go. They know where it's safe and where they can stay cool and stay. You it was know. amazing. It was just I would not never in a, a hundred years think inside yeah. the, the woodshed. Yeah. But I went in there, and you could see where exactly she was laying down, and it was like, Wow. Yeah, they are. They're resilient. And they find a place, that's where they go. Yeah, so having a good habitat and maybe making them a house or two would be nice. Absolutely. But, uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, and that's why, you know, I got it logged. And I, mm-hmm. It was time. It was over 20 years since it was logged. Right. So. And you see what happened. I mean, we showed pictures last week of his place yep. and what's going on up there and, and how quickly it rejuvenated. So it's, uh, it's just what you need to do. And it's just like going back to uh, what... Wayne Sitton just said, you know, it, habitat is key. It's, it's, it's not only the intake, getting the amount of food into them. I mean, we, you said pine needle. Well, if they fill a stomach full of pine needles, is that good? No. You know, you want to give them what they need to make milk. Yep. You know, and that's one of the things we do about planting food plots. And, you know, I'm learning more about forbs now and, and natural forbs that they eat. And, you know, and then the deer bras and all that. Trying to put, put all this together and make it's, it work. It's a, it's a big, giant puzzle. It is. It is. You know, it's a lot it's, of work. It's nature's puzzle, and she can throw a wrench in it at any time, whether yeah. it be forest fire, flood, snowstorms. Snowstorm. It, it, it's yeah. It's an amazing thing, and it, it's a, a one very adaptable animal as, as far as the bears, too. Well, it just shows you how resilient deer really are. Right. You know, I mean, they've lived, you know, how, how many years they've been on this earth, you know, and they still seem to carve out their existence and, and, and keep pushing through. And also with a little help of man, too, though. Yep. We, you know, we almost drove them out of here and yep. tried to shoot everything. Yep. I said, hold on, time out. we got to fix that. Yep. So hopefully, you know, uh, as we go to and trying to get that into the people's heads and Absolutely. just trying just trying to educate people. Yep, you that's know, what it's all about. You know, from the the Wayne Sittons, the mm-hmm. Dr. Deer, and, and learning from Lincoln's them, group. Lincoln's group, uh, learning from all those people and taking it GDMA. all in and come up with it and formulate your own opinion. Mm-hmm. But just don't, you know. And, and before before we go uh, tonight, the one thing I want to say, I mean, we, we talked a lot about the beginning of the show about the meeting coming up in Lansing, the NRC meeting. Um, we talked a little bit about deer management here in the last segment of the show. In different groups, and everybody's got everybody's got an agenda. I mean, let's pull no punches. Everybody's got their own way and methods of wanting to see things done. Right. <clears throat> but what I've seen lately, and it's very important, is the fact that the people who really care about deer management, they all have a different way maybe of approaching things, but we're starting to see these groups come together on, on the things that they, they hold in common. And they're pushing forward to make it better. You know, and in, in, in Lincoln Road, hey, thanks for the comment about sharing good information. Well done. Um, we try. But Lincoln Road said it too. Uh, 
the other groups in the state of Michigan finally got to kind of sat or whatever they did, sat down, talked, whatever, and said, we have a common basis. The light switch went on. And so let's push, let's push the commonality mm-hmm. and go from there. You know, you know, but the one thing I've said, you know, you give all of us enough time, you put us all in a room together, it doesn't take long, and we're all throwing sand at each other and throwing toys at, our, our toys at each other because we can't get along. But and that's the thing we, we need to stop doing and start bringing everybody together. Find out what we have in common and, and work on those. You know? Absolutely, and this doesn't just this doesn't isn't just Michigan. No, this is every state that's got any kind of population of wildlife. Right. Whether you're dealing with moose, elk, mm-hmm. deer, bear. Well, you know what? Okay, we got Lincoln's on and, and Wayne's on watching, and I believe Luke is too. Um, Danny and I, before the show started tonight, we were talking about something, and and it, we didn't didn't know the answer to, and we're kind of scratching our heads here. But we've got CWD in Wisconsin. We've got it in Pennsylvania. We've got it in Michigan. Now it's it's in Jackson County. Allegedly, it's not been proven positive yet by Ames, Iowa. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, but they've got a suspect down there. And if so, that puts it down on the border near Ohio and close to Indiana. Why, instead of each state trying to solve the problem on their own, why don't the Great Lakes area get a coalition or, you said, a consortium together, put all their heads together and battle this from a regional point of view? Well, because you know deer abide by state lines <laughs> yeah okay they all got a license plate tells what state they're from <laughs> they won't go past the ohio michigan yeah. border yeah. no you're right and that's that's the thing it's like like you said it's getting to jackson not proven yet so is ohio looking at it they've had a is, case i believe in yep, 2017 in a captive deer. do they if okay so do they have an emergency response program does it mimic what happens in Michigan or... or, or Does Indiana have... What, what do other yeah. states have? And why why aren't states talking? Why aren't states getting together and putting a, like a wholesale plan together or, regionally? Or is it one of those things, kind of like you said... Can't play in the sandbox. Can't play in the same... Well, we don't want to copy their plan because we need to make our own plan. Michigan's copying Wisconsin's. Yeah, I know. Allegedly. So it is what it is. And all we can do is, like Lincoln said, let your voice be heard and... Hopefully, things happen. Go to the NRC meeting if you got the opportunity. If you can get the day off work, I know a lot of people work. Um, if you can go, it matters. Um, I'm not going to be able to be there, but this is my way of but they getting will, this out. I do believe they will be live streaming it on Facebook. Yeah, that's a whole other subject. They need to do a better job. <laughs> Whoever puts that on, they need to do a better job. Right. So I know two guys who would who would do a better job at live streaming that. Right. I don't. I think we could talk to those two guys. And come up with a plan, and and make it uh, easier to watch Listenable? and listen to. Yes, yes. So if that's a word, just saying. But but yep. No, it, it's an interesting. It, it, it's an interesting thing. Just like the other thing we talked about about the grouse in the West Nile. Uh, stay stay tuned about that. I want. I wait for the give a give that nugget you give me earlier before the show on that. We'll end the show on that point. Yeah. So uh, just uh, a friend of mine over in Wisconsin uh, writing an article talking about grouse and West Nile. They got a blip of West Nile and a grouse or something of that nature. I don't know the whole details yet because I haven't seen the article. It hasn't come out yet, but this is the tease I got. So what what Wisconsin did was instituted an emergency plan, and they're cutting the grouse season short over there. And Michigan and Minnesota seen the same blip and they not did. doing anything about it. So which one's right and which one's wrong? There you go. So, or is there a little give and take both ways? Right. And why aren't the three states talking to each other? Uh, that's a whole other thing. Or maybe they have. I don't know. So that's a question I got. Um, Tim Seas just says that if you use population control in the state, trying to isolate it in one area in West Virginia, we have it in four counties in the eastern, eastern Panhandle. Um, Wayne Sitton just <laughs> says Wisconsin doesn't follow Wisconsin's plan. That's the problem. <laughs> um, but my question is, is are they talk? Are they talking to each other, and do they work together? That's I, the question. I, I I have no idea. I revert back to my own personal experience where I work. Mm-hmm. You take them, you put them all in the same room, you give them all the same information, and when they walk out the doors, everybody's got a different opinion. Mm-hmm. And you go, "What did you guys just not see?" And you go, and, and then you start talking to them individually. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, well that works. And then the next person says, "Oh, that doesn't work." It's like, did we not? 
see the same presentation. But maybe, maybe there's a reason why it doesn't work for that person in their situation. Maybe there's something different. Maybe over here it works for this person because their situation is a little different. Well, if, if these four states have this, share the information and talk to each other and figure out why it works or doesn't work in those areas. I think it has to do with a little bit of pride and a little oh, bit of... I, I fully agree. I think I, I think you're spot on. And it, why it, they're not talking to each other, I, if they are, I want to know. It, it, and it's a very interesting concept. I don't and think they are. I think they are. You I think, think so? I think they're just deriving a different opinion from it based on... It could be anything from... Money. Opinion, egos, I'm, and money. I, 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 yeah, I think you're right. I think there's a lot of all that in there. Oh, well, you already know my theory on that one. So. Right, so... Um, but no, good discussion. Tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Thank- you know what uh, is is good to end that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, uh, I Mike, wish I, Michael. Uh, okay, th- th- do that. There we go. Um, yeah, but um, <laughs> no, good discussion as always. And you know what? It's just we'll see come Thursday, or actually, I think it's August. Thursday's the meeting. Mm-hmm. Then August, I think they draw the line in the sand with what they're going to do. Right. Well, I think there there there's another private opportunity uh for co-op leaders the the meeting that we're well i I, i've already signed up for it i don't know if you're going yet or not but co-op leaders have been invited uh to a workshop and from what i heard the nrc is actually going to be there to talk with those people so that there'll be one last opportunity that's where i'm going to try to make my voice be heard at that at that opportunity that's the one chance i'm going to have so yep and we'll see right um, I, I hear you. I hear you, Lincoln. <laughs> I hear you. Um, you guys just go over and read the comments on the live stream. Yeah. So. so, anyways, it was a good discussion. Always good to talk, dear. Uh, good week of seeing dear. Good work week of seeing bear fo- eagles forest reproducing, yeah. getting the young growth going. Uh, Are you learning anything up there with what you're doing? Yeah, I grew something. I am happy <laughs> that. That's cool. That it is. That I was. I'm ecstatic. Uh, we're going to work on it some more, probably come Labor Day, throw some more stuff out, and I'll learn more as we go. All right. Uh, I want to give a quick shout-out to Lincoln Roan and to Wayne Sutton, Luke Sutton. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you guys being on. Uh, appreciate the input you guys give us and keeping us on track. Um, there's just so much information that a lot of times it's hard for me to get the, the little tiny nit- bits and pieces. Um, the thing about the milk production and the intake versus the fat content and all that, the quality, uh, that was spot on, Wayne. Thanks. I appreciate it. It's, well, it goes back it's, to like uh, vitamin D milk, right? Right, right. Do you want to eat vitamin? Do you want them to have vitamin yeah. D or zero yeah. percent? So it's uh, it's all great information. And, you know, and we're just trying to share information with you guys out there to uh, hopefully make you better stewards of the land and stewards of the resources and the deer and, and get a healthy deer population going. Uh, so everything's good. Yeah, you know? yep, yep, yep. So, all right, we're going to sign off on the podcast right now. We'll keep the live stream up here for a few minutes, but uh, on the podcast side, uh, if you guys got uh, anything that you want to share with us, you know, you can always email us, uh, hit us Facebook up on us. Facebook, on Twitter, you know, uh, any of those social media yeah. platforms. So that'll do it for us this week, folks. And don't forget, you can catch us in syndication at 2 p.m. Eastern time on goodtalkradio.com. This episode was brought to you by PSE Archery, Power Express, Fourth Arrow Camera Arms, Wind Scent Hunting Scent, Killer Food Plots, Seeds, Supplements, and Attractants, Cabela's, Spot Shooters, Limb Walker Game Calls, Twisted Minds Bowstrings, Hunters Blend Coffee, antler action and family traditions tree stands thanks for listening and join us again here next week until then remember as we always like to say if you're out on the water or in the woods shoot straight and be safe until next week on the up north journal